All right, so today's review is going to be of Galen Hall Golf Course in Wernersville, Veneseville, Pennsylvania, which is just a half an hour or so northeast of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So the thing about this course, and this is the third one that I've reviewed uh, lately, um, played lately, but I haven't actually done the review, so I'm trying to catch up. I've been having so much fun playing golf the last couple of months, to be honest. Um, I have um, picked up a couple of, uh, actually several new clubs <laughs> lately, and between going out on, um, let's say, practice rounds at uh, clubs near my, near my house, and um, going out to play other courses that I haven't played yet before, I've been playing quite a bit of golf, and it's not really easy for me to play once or twice a week, at least once or twice a week, um, and work, and I've been working like a dog the last month, and uh, also travel to some of these courses, which are three to four hours away from my house, and review the course audibly and then edit all the photos and then prepare the video. So what's been uh, slacking, what's been getting the short shrift of this is the editing the videos. Um, and also I haven't even had a chance to sit down and actually make the, the audio for the videos. So I'm trying to catch up on it now. And I, I just played today, just got a chance to play Galen Hall. And this course is a decent course. Now, I won't say it's a great course. It's, it's definitely not a great course. Uh, I found it in the, I guess, the top100golfcourses.com website, and it is ranked um, 45th, excuse me, it's ranked 45th in the state, uh, according to their list. Now, this is much like the course I played before then, which was, uh, what was it called? Um, Last week I played, uh, I have to look it up here, and Omni Bedford Springs Golf Resort. It's, it was similar in that regard in the sense that it's in a valley. And uh, these valley courses are interesting. I've played quite a few uh, valley courses, but they're definitely sort of like of a type, okay? When a valley course is basically a course in a valley, and that means that there are hills, if not mountains, on the side. So you're, if you can imagine sort of an oval, and there will be hills on the left, hills on the right, and then the course is usually on the bowl of the valley. And sometimes it's just flat, like marshland, because there's a lot of streams and stuff. It might even be like marshland that's been dried out to um, put a course there. Like uh, this course I played in Kentucky, uh, whose name escapes me at the moment, um, but um, it was actually a pretty decent course. Very, very um, high waste, very uh, extensive marsh, extensive water. Uh, just a very atypical kind of course. It's like literally like almost like playing in a swamp for a lot of it. Uh, but this course, Galen Hall, was not like that at all. It was... Uh, it definitely had some water in the course. There was there were uh, some creeks and stuff, and there's an island green. Uh, I think it's number 15 is an island green, and so on. But it, it isn't really a flat course. It definitely has some uh, serious verticality. The greens have a lot of um, pace due to slopage, and it's actually a pretty decent course. Now, the thing about it is it's not one of those, like, lush neighborhood um, woods courses uh, like, say, Lake Presidential or something, or even a lot of the courses I've been playing lately in Richmond, which are like these big planned communities where they have a golf course in and around the planned community. And there's a lot of houses in, in the area, you know, whether it's a, a moderate amount of houses or a lot of houses, it's, it's, it's much... You know, as much a, a housing development as it is a golf course. And the course 
has a certain stamp to it based on the number of houses and proximity of houses. I would say that, that, that counts for all courses, really. One of the things you definitely will notice when you play the course is that there are people there who live in that area who do not play, are not playing golf. They're not there. They're, that's where they live. That's where they have a house, um, a yard, uh, a garage, family, and so forth. Not, it's not someplace they drive to you know, once in a blue moon or whatever, it's something where the golf course is in their neighborhood and they look out the back window and there it is. There's a golf course there every day that, you know, that they're there and they're constantly having to deal with golfers, you know, running around in their backyard or not in their backyard, but very close to their backyard or certainly out, you know, in sight of their house, looking out the window and listening to golfers talk and so forth. And the same thing with golfers. Golfers have to listen to people who live in the houses. So it's, it's certainly a big thing factor that one has to take into consideration how close the houses are to the course, how big the houses are, how many houses are packed together, how um, much traffic noise there is, you know, whether there's a road that's a 25 mile an hour road or a 40 mile an hour road or a 55 mile an hour road that runs by the course. There almost always is when you, when you play golf in a neighborhood course, there always is some degree of interaction between the golfers and the residents. So the good thing about this course, Galen Hall, is it is in a valley where I would say probably two-thirds of the course there's very few houses near the course. Uh, you will see some houses in the area, certainly, but it is almost, I would say, a good two-thirds of the course is really nothing substantial in terms of housing. Unfortunately, for the first... Um, Half or third of the first nine in the back nine at the end, because near the clubhouse is where there are some um, serious houses in terms of numbers. It's a, it's a, got a different character. The middle of the course between I'd say the fourth hole and the sixteenth hole, there's pretty much no houses really that are a factor in the course. Not I won't say none. Uh, there's, I could think of at least two holes on the, on the backside where there's a house near the tee box or a house near the green, uh, before you get to like 18, which runs up along the sides of, of, uh, a row of houses. Um, but this course has a low impact from housing near the course, relatively low. The other good thing about this course as a valley course is that it doesn't have a lot of trees on the course. It has some trees, but not a lot. It's not like every hole you play and you're in this lane of trees, you know, to the left, lane of trees to the right, and they're maybe 10, 15 yards off the rough, and then there's a fairway, you know, and, and but you know you're basically playing in a lane of trees. I mean, some, some courses, they, it's just like you're in this alley of trees, and some courses there's some trees, and there's some courses there's, you know, there's a, a stand of trees to the left and maybe a, a drop off to the right into the woods or the waste. Um, but this course doesn't give you that impression that you're really, you know, in, in a narrow lane of trees, hole after hole after hole, or even a wide fairway with trees on the, on the outside. It's, it's much more open, much more air, much more sun. And the course benefits from that um, very much so because there's very few holes where the greens are shaded and therefore crappy or the fairways are shaded and therefore crappy and or the tee box is even shaded and therefore crappy. Now I'm not saying that there are none but there certainly are not as many as a neighborhood's woods course where there are just trees everywhere. So this course has a fair amount of traffic noise because there are some um, route you know 29 type roads where it's like two lanes speed limit of 45 miles an hour and it's it's got a, a very good amount of hills and elevation changes in the course as a matter of fact i would say it's it's a good old-fashioned course in that re regard where almost every other hole is up you know 20 feet or up 100 feet and down 100 feet or something like that and that's that's a good challenge i i think it's an interesting third dimension that a lot of courses neglect is the verticality of the hole you know the the difference between Fairway and tee, fairway and green, 
tea to green, things of that nature. And this course has a very, uh, I would say, entertaining aspect to it in terms of that. A good challenging aspects in terms of verticality. And the greens were actually very well conditioned and not at all in bad shape for March. Now, they also were not recently aerated and they also were decent um, kind of poa type greens. And they were in really decent condition considering the course is not like one of those super well-maintained courses. It's just a scruffy kind of um, backwoods and not even in a great neighborhood. It's just, you know, you know, borderline, you know, um, old houses and stuff. And there's some nice houses there, but, you know, not really. It's not an upscale neighborhood. You're going to look at it, you're going to know that's not the case. But there are some things in the houses there. But I thought it was fun. I thought it was a fun course to play. I enjoyed, uh, I would say, almost every hole. The first hole was really not any kind of special hole, but it was a decent warm-up hole. But the second hole, you know, when you go over the top of the hill and make a hard turn to the left and go down to the green, and you've never played that hole before, that, you know, that's an interesting hole. It wasn't long. It was 6,200 yards from the back tees. I would say it wasn't a very high slope uh, course. And if I look up the slope for that course, what was it? I think I have it somewhere here. Uh... Yeah, 127 from the blue tees. Not a high slope at all, but definitely a challenging course. It wasn't a course where all the holes, all the greens were elevated, but some of them were. It, it wasn't where um, all the, the greens were flat with you know no real... Um, uh, I would say you know, like a ring, you know, basically like a, a disc on the ground where uh, you couldn't just bump and run balls to the green. But some of them were. And it had a good variety. And that was one of the interesting things about it. It had a lot of variety in a course that wasn't very long. So you could focus on your shots, not necessarily the distance. It, it, had a lot of holes where the greens were 328 par fours, things like that, uh, 127 par three, 150, 175 yard par three from the back tees. And it wasn't one of those courses where you would go out there and feel like you had to play these really long shots off the tee. And it had a good number of holes where you could get the feeling that you could almost drive the green, almost, you know, pretty close. Maybe a little bit long for um, most players, but certainly, you know, you could get close, you could get in 75 yards and, and uh, pitch up. So it was fun. I, I certainly enjoyed playing the course. And while it was almost a four hour drive for me, it was worth the drive. I enjoyed it. The drive, it was nice weather to drive up. Um, much easier to drive up four hours in nice sunny weather than it is when it's raining and the traffic sucks and there's an accident. None of that. Uh, beautiful day to play golf. Uh, modest winds, nice clear sky, not hot not really humid. It was just knocking on the door, getting a little bit humid, a little bit hot. But uh, the day today was about uh, 60 degrees for the high. And just a really beautiful, beautiful day to play golf. Nice drive, nice drive up there, nice drive back. Just, I just enjoyed, enjoyed it entirely. And I, I just would have to say that the course was a little bit wet in places and kind of ground up by carts going into low spots and, and shooting up the course a little bit. And it just really wasn't like a really, you know, <laughs> it wasn't some place you go, there's flowers uh, around the tea boxes and, and greens and stuff. Uh, it was a serviceably good condition course that had a good layout for a fun round that was not a ball buster of a length of a course or difficulty but it certainly was a decently challenging course for $35 with a cart on a Saturday in um, late March. I could hardly complain. It, it was excellent variety. I definitely enjoyed it. And it, it just was, I would say, a, I won't call it a gem. I would say, you know, it was, it was a scruffy neighborhood course that was actually pretty decent. Okay. Uh, so I will give this course a B, 
overall, I would say the condition of the course is probably like more like a C plus, uh, but the panache of the course in terms of its just general playability and um, it was somewhere, you know, a little bit more than a practice round, but not quite a full blown, you know, um, I would say like TPC Sawgrass or something like that. Not something where you're going to make a big tournament out of it, but definitely a, a challenge for uh, a 90s, 80s player to play this course. And so, as such, a B is giving it credit in some areas and not giving it credit it deserves in other areas and a good modest um, score. I, I would say that this is one of those courses where... You wouldn't put it at the top of your Christmas list, but if you could get a chance to drive by and play it, it definitely would be worth the outing. That's Galen Hall Golf Club in Wernersville, Pennsylvania, a decent B course.